Open your book to page 318. Okay, this lesson is learn how to, uh, how to factor. So first, we're going to go over how to find a GCF. So G GCF is the greatest common factor. So let's go to example one. Uh, A, you're looking for GCF for 24 and 16. Now, you learned this before, but before you learn how to use the factor tree, right? To break it down and you see what they have in common. But factor tree is kind of easy to make a mistake and it's more, I, I, I guess it's not as, as, as good. So I'm going to teach you a different method and, well actually this is a review, we did this before, right? So what you want to do is, you look at the, the two numbers directly and see what can divide by both numbers. And you want to start with the lowest number, lowest prime number and you go up. So both are even numbers, so both are divisible by 2. So you divide by 2, you get 12 and 8. Now both are even again, so you can divide by 2 again. So divide by 2 again, so you get 6 and 4. Now both are even again, so both are divisible by 2. So you keep doing it until you cannot do it anymore. So you get 3 and 2. And that's it, right? So your GCF would be all the numbers on the side. So, and, and all these are factors, so you multiply. So 2 times 2 times 2 will give you 8, and that's your answer for that, okay? So that way you don't have to do the factor tree. Because factor tree, especially if two, both numbers are really big, it's very, it's very easy to make a mistake. Okay, then let's go to B. So you got 6 and 35. Okay, so what can both divide? Well, this one can divide by 2, but this one cannot. This one can divide by 3, but this one cannot. So in this case, that's none. So in this case, GCF would be just 1. Okay, nothing you can divide among them. Okay, okay now, you, so you can do the same thing with, with C. Okay, now you got three numbers now. You got 252, 189, and 126. So it doesn't matter how many numbers you have. You can do, do them all together. That way you don't need to have a three factor trees. Okay, so again, you start with the, the lowest number, right? Lowest prime number, two, right? So this can divide by two, this one can divide by two, but this cannot. So two is no good. So you go to the next prime number, three. Okay, now remember we covered this before, right? How to do the testing, right? So you add for the three, you add all the digits together. So this is nine. So divide by divisible by three, yes. So this one is 18, divisible by 3, yes. This is 9, divisible by 3. So that means these are divisible by 3. Okay. So it would be 8, 84. This one divided by 3, you get 63. Divide by 3, you get 42. Okay? Now you keep trying the 3 again, right? In, once the 2 is no good, you don't want to keep trying it again. Okay? So this one divided by 3, divide by 3. Divide by 3, okay, and that's it. Cannot divide by 3 anymore, right? Then you go to 5, right? Remember, you only try the prime numbers only. So you go to 5, so no, so you could try 7. So this is 4, 3, and 2. So that's it, right? So your GCF would be equal to all this together. So 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 7 is 63, and that's it. So again, that way you don't have to do the factor tree, especially with three big numbers, the factor tree, and then you have to go and look for the common, uh, common numbers among the three trees. So it, it's, it's too, too, you know, too, you know, wasting too much time. Okay? Okay, so that's how you find the GCF. Now let's go to example two. So now you're going to start to get variables now. So you go to example two. So you got 15x to the 3 plus 9x. Okay, so you're looking for GCF among those two terms. So G G G GCF, again, first you look at a number, so 9 and 15, it can go off to the side if you don't see it, you know, right away. So if you cannot see it, it's a 3, then you go to the side. So it'd be 3, right? So GCF is 3, right? Over here. Then you go to, so you do the number, then you go to variable, then after you do the group. So the number, is 3. Now the variable, you got x to the 3 and x, right? So you, for the GCF, you take the lowest one. So it would be x. Okay? And that's it. Okay. 
okay? So, so that's what you need to do for GCF. So GCF is what you need to factor out. Okay? Factoring is a reverse of multiplying. Right? You just have a test on how to multiply, right? So now you're going to do the factoring. So let's go ahead and do example three, how to factor. So 15x to the three plus nine x. So factoring is the reverse of multiplication. So you want to see what they have in common and you want to take it out. Okay, so 15 and nine. Okay, so basically you want to take out the GCF. You want to take out the greatest common factor. So 15 and nine, you can take out the three, right? From here, right? What we, so let's use this information. So you can factor out a 3x. So this is a leftover. Okay? So factor means dividing. So 15 divided by 3 will give you 5. Okay? And x to the 3 divided by x will give you x squared. And none of everything. So 9 divided by 3 will give you 3, and that's it, right? So you can check your answers. Remember what I said, right? Factoring is a, the reverse of the, of the multiplication. So you can check your answer by multiply by and see if you get the same thing, right? So three times five give you 15, x times x squared give you x cubed, okay? Then you got three x times three give you nine x. So that's it. So again, factoring and multiplication are reverse of each other. So you, you did this in, in, in chapter three, right? Um, well, yeah, chapter three, you did some of the, and also the previous chapter you, you distribute, right? To get that. So now you're going back with your factoring, means you're taking out the common factors. Okay, so that's going to do more example and it become more clear. So example four, you got six x plus four. You want to factor, so six and four, you can factor out a two, right? Factor means divide. So six and four, you can divide by two. And so you do the number, then you go to alphabet. Well, there's no alphabet because there's none over here. So factor means you divide, right? So you, so you can kind of ask yourself, okay, two times four will give you six, three, right? And you need to have the x, right? So 2 times 3x will give you 6x. Plus 2 times 4 will give you 4. 2, right? Or 4 divided by 2 give you 2, right? Either way. So again, you need to understand that factoring is the reverse of the multiplication. And that's it. That's how you do that. So this is called a factor. Okay? Now, if you go to example 5, you got 5x plus 2y. Okay, so again, first you do the number, 5 and 2. Can you factor anything from 5 and 2? No, right? How about, how about the variable or the alphabet, x and the y? They don't have anything in common. So this one is not factorable. That's nothing you can take out between them. Okay, so this is not factorable. Okay, so let's go over more examples. Let's go to example 6. So you got 24x to the 3 minus 16x to the 5. Now when you when you doing your homework, right? Leave a little bit of space in the front so you have room to, to label. Okay? Okay, so 24 and 16, the common factor is 8. But if let's say if you don't know that it's 8, you can go up to the side. Okay, you can do the 2, 12 and 8, right? Divide by 2, you get 6 and 4. Divide by 2, you get 3 and 2, right? So that's how I get 8, right? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So for the number, you can factor out the 8. The variable, you got x to the 3, x to the 5, you can take out x to the 3. And the reason you want to have a space in front, so that way you can put parentheses under here to line things up, okay? And also, if you notice the 3 and 2, see the 3 and 2 over here? That's what you need to have over here, okay? See, 8 times 3 gives you 24, right? And the, so the variable is all gone already, so you don't write anything. Now, 8 times 2 gives you 16, right? See the 3 and 2? That's where it came from, okay? And you need to have x squared, right? Because x to the 3 times x to the 2 gives you x to the 5. So you can check, distribute, right? So if you, if you check your answer, ax3 times 3 gives you 24x to the cube, right? Multiply, right? 8x to the 3 times 2x to the 2 gives you 16x to the 5. Right? So again, that's what factoring is. So factoring is to, so factoring is to take out 
the common factors. And you can check your answer by multiplying. Okay? And that's it. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go to example 7. You got 2x to the 4 plus 4x to the 3 minus 8x squared. So put parentheses over here. So let's do the numbers so 2, 4, and 8. I can find out the 2. And the variable x, three, uh, x squared, x cubed, x4, I can find out the x squared, right? So now let's go and write down what is left over. So you can remember, factor means divide, right? So, or you can kind of do, do the reverse dividing. So, so this would be x squared, right? 2x squared times x squared give you x to the 4, right? Plus, okay, so the, you need to get 2x over here, right? Because 2 times 2 give you 4, x squared times x give you x cubed, right? Now, make sure you line up everything. You make things a lot easier to, to, to get your answer, right? So you need to get minus 4, right? 2 times negative 4 give you negative 8. And x squared, you don't, need a, you don't need a variable because you already have the x squared, right? And you can check. 2x squared times 4 give you 8x squared, right? And notice the sign is always lined up. That way, easy to, to keep track of everything. And that's it. Okay? Let's go to example 8. Okay, you got 6a to the 3, b to the 3, minus 8a squared, b squared, plus 10a to the 3, b. Okay? okay, so again, let's look at the numbers. 6a and 10, you can factor out a 2, right? GCF is 2. So you do the number, then you go to the alphabet. So you got a to the 3, a to the 2, a to the 3. Okay? So that we can factor out the a to the 3. Then you go down to B. So you got B to the 3, B to the 2, and the B. So you can find out the B. Okay, so far so good? Uh, what did I did? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Got carried away. Okay, very good. Okay, so you have to take the lowest one, right? Okay, so now let's go and see what, 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 what is left over. So in, in order to find out a 2, you're going to get 3, right? 2 times 3 give you 6. And this one, you're going to have an A, right? A squared times A give you A cubed. And this one, you find out a B, so you're going to get B squared, right? And this one, you're going to get 4. Right? Use your finger to help you to keep track, right? So this one, you need to get minus 4. This one already good. This one, you need to B, right? You just do the reverse multiplication, you just do the multiplication, right? This one, you need to plus 5. You need to have an A. And B already have. And so that's it. Okay? So that's example 8. Let's go to example 9. So you got 3xy minus 6y squared minus 3y. Okay, so you got 3, 6, and 3. So you can find out a 3. And the alphabet x, no x, so cannot do the x. You got y, y squared, and y. So you can find out the y. Okay, so now let's go and check. Okay, 3 is good. You need to have an x. y is good. This one, you need to get minus 2. And this one, you need to have y. Right? y times y give you y squared. This one, you, you, you already have a 3, so you don't need anything. Now, when you find out everything, it's 1, right? Because you need to get 3y times 1 to get 3y, right? So don't just leave it blank. Okay? So again, you need to have the same number of terms. You see how everything all line up, right? You can look at this one over here. 3y times minus 1 give you minus 3y. So you need to have 1 over here. Okay? So remember that. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go and do practice. So